Okay, welcome back. Now I'm going to do a demo I call Boyle's Law using a mercury tube. So uh, the way that it works is that you have two open tubes here and there's a column of mercury here. The height of this uh, one and this one is the same, right? And then the height of this one, this one is a closed tube. So the height of this one is smaller because the pressure in here is greater than the atmospheric pressure because we've closed off this tube right here. So I've already measured the height from the, uh, the bottom to the, the top of the closed tube, H closed. And then that's equal to 30 centimeters. And then uh, the formula for the pressure inside of the closed tube is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere plus the density of mercury times gravity times the difference of the two heights. Since this height is bigger than that height, that means the pressure in here is larger than the atmospheric pressure. This pressure is pushing down on this mercury since it is larger than the pressure of the atmosphere pushing down on the open side therefore this one goes down deeper and it beats that one right because this is closed so then what's going to happen is i have a stick here on the left one there's a stick here and then i'm going to press down on this stick as i press down on the stick this one will go down right a certain amount this one will go up a certain amount right but this one will not go up as much because this one tries to go up the pressure in here gets bigger and bigger it doesn't permit the mercury in the closed tube from getting high so i'm going to take a few data points as i press down on this what's the height there what's the height there then i press it down a little bit more what's the height there what's the height there and then using the equation i'm going to be uh, calculating the pressure in here and then I want to, my eventual goal is to show that the pressure inside of the closed tube, because we have here PV equals NRT, and then the Boyle's law says that the pressure of a gas times the volume of a gas, if the temperature is constant, the pressure times the volume is a constant, that means the pressure times volume is like this, that means the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume, right? So. In, our, in my case, I don't really need to uh, calculate the volume of the closed tube the, since the uh, area is not changing. Uh, all I need to prove is that the pressure is inversely proportional to the height of the column of air in the closed tube, right? So if I can show that pressure is inversely proportional to 1 over the height, and then that would be the height of the air. So what would be that? How do, how do I calculate that? That would be the H closed minus the H1, okay? If you subtract the two, that will give you the height of the air in the closed tube. So if, if the height of the air in the closed tube goes down, the pressure should increase. So then I'll, I will tabulate the results, I will invert this, and I will show that pressure is proportional to one over H air. And then I should be getting a straight line. In other words, if I invert the, air, the height of the air, then I will, I will tabulate that if I can show that pressure. So I'm going to, on the vertical axis, I'm going to graph pressure. On the horizontal axis, I'm going to graph 1 over H air. And then I should be getting data points that look like this. Okay, so now you can tell the height of the closed tube is uh, 30 centimeters here. Then I'm going to, I have the stick here. I'm going to be pressing down on the stick until this one reaches uh, 15 centimeters, the height of the mercury in the closed tube. 15 right here. Okay, and then here, I'm gonna be recording 22 and a half, the height of the mercury in the open tube. It's more like 22.6. So let's record that. Then I press down some more. And I get here 16. And then over here, I get 29.8. Then I get here 17, 17 and 37 point, 37 point eight. Okay, the furthest I can push the stick Keep pushing it, keep pushing it. The, the, this one will reach 17.4, and this one will reach here 41.3. 17.4, 41.3.
Okay, now to get some intermediary data points, just to fill the more da uh, data in my data points, I'm gonna get here 15 and a half, 26.2. 15 and a half, 26.2. If I get my one more data point, I'll have sufficient data. I'll get one here, 16 and a half. And then the corresponding data point here is going to be 33.3. Okay, now I've tabulated this uh, H1 and H2. I converted them into meters, 0 0.15, 0 0.226. Then I got halfway between 1.5 and 1.6. Then I got the H2, 0 0.16, 0 0.165, 0 0.17, 0 0.174. So in order to calculate the pressure of the air in the closed tube, I'm just applying this equation, right? So let's give you an example for one of them and then generate all the data for the other ones. The pressure of the air is gonna be the atmospheric pressure in 10 to the fifth pascals. And then the density of mercury, is, since it's 13.6 times denser than water, it's gonna be 13,600. Density of mercury, 13,600 kilogram per cubic meter. Right, the density of water is 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. So you put here 13,600 kilogram per cubic meter, then you multiply that by 9.8, and then you multiply that by the difference of the heights, 0 0.226 minus 0.15. Subtract the two heights. That gives you the pressure of the atmosphere, uh, Pascals, right? Um, so then after that, all you have to do is change this, uh, the H2 and the H1. The rest of the formula stays the same. So you can go back into your formula, just change H2, and so now it's just H2.262, and then H1 is going to be 0 0.155. 0 0.155. So the pressure is 1.55. Notice what's happening. 1. Uh, 1. Uh, 1.1556 times 10 to the fifth. The difference between the two heights is getting larger because as I press this in, the open tube is free to move up. The mercury can go up easily. But in the closed tube, it can't go up because the pressure in the closed tube starts getting larger and larger, right? So the difference between the two gets larger. Okay, so then the next one is going to be 0 0.298, 0 0.16. So when I uh, do my plotting, I don't really even need the 10 to the fifth because all I'm trying to show is that um, the pressure is inversely proportional to the height. So I, all I care about are the numbers themselves. How are the numbers increasing? So on the vertical axis, on the, when I open up Excel, on the vertical axis, I can have uh, the pressure. So my data points will be 1.114, 1.1556, and so on. Okay, so until you get to 1.33, right? 1.3315, uh, this is the pressure. And then over here, I'll put one over the height of the air. So what is the height of the air? Well, remember the closed tube was 30 centimeters. From here to here was 0.3 meters. The closed tube minus H1, right? So the H of the air is gonna be 0 0.30 meters minus 0.15 meters. So that part, that's gonna be 0.15 meters. And this is in meters, right? And then you're gonna do 0 0.30 minus 0.155. So that's gonna be 0.145, right? And then 0.3 minus 0.16 is going to be 0.14. Column on Excel, and then I'll just do 1 over H air, and I'll have a column here, 1 over H air, right? And that's the reciprocal of this. So 1 divided by 0.15, that gives you 6.6666, okay? Repeating sixes. 1 divided by 0.145, That'll be 6.89655. And then, so now I'm gonna plot the pressure of the air versus this and see if that gives me a linear graph. Then I have proven that pressure is inversely proportional to volume, okay? So let's uh, open up the computer. I will, on the left column, I'll put H air, okay? Then I'll put the H of the air, 0.15, 0.155, okay, and then over here I'll put one over 
the height of the air. So all I have to do is just put an equation in uh, 1 divided by A2. Right? So this way I'm not rounding it as much as, uh, this way I'm not rounding it as much as if I had just calculated and put the rounded number, right? So this is the 6.66, then I'm just gonna drag this down. Right, and then the last column was the pressure of the air. So remember, I don't need the 10 to the fifth, I just need the numbers that I got. So I got 1.114, Boyle would have been proud of us here. Graph pressure versus one over the height of the air. If this gives you a very good straight line, then pressure is inversely proportional to the volume of the air, right? So copy these numbers, insert. It does look like a nice straight line with some deviation. So there, there you go, some human error measurement error, it does look like a little bit fluctuating, but it does generally look like a straight line. So then we can go to layout, trend line, okay, set the equation on the chart, set the R squared value. Okay, so in here, the most important thing is actually the R squared value. The slope is not that important because uh, it's just gonna tell me what's the slope of this versus this. But in my case, I wasn't really looking for the slope. I'm just looking to see, do these points fit on the perfect straight line? So the R squared value is 0.9994. That's a very, very good error. So if I wanted to calculate, if this R squared value was one, there would be 0% error. So what is my error now? It's just gonna be um, equals to So you see what I'm doing here in the equation? I'm comparing, because if I had gotten a R squared value of one, there would be no deviation at all from a straight line. So I'm just saying one minus 0.9994 over one times 100, that's how much deviation I have from being a perfect straight line. So my answer was 0.06% error, not bad. Okay, so uh, Boyle would have been proud of this. There's only a little bit of error maybe in this dot, maybe slightly in this dot. Now what if I analyze this on Logger Pro? So if I go over to Logger Pro, see, okay? So in order to make the graph appear, you can go over here and do um, auto scale. So you see it auto scale it for you. So you can kind of see this one already gives you an approximate what would happen if you actually connect the points. Okay, so it's actually connecting those points, and you can see it kind of goes up and then down and then back up again. And then if, if I had time, I could go and recheck my measurements, and then I would probably find that one of them or a couple of them are a little bit off. So it's pretty much a measurement error, right? And then I can ask the uh, Logger Pro to give me a straight line fit. You see where it says linear fit? And then the linear fit kind of goes through the data points. So the black line here is the linear fit. Over here it goes below the data points. The, over here it goes above the data points. And here it goes below the data points. So the red one is at the actual connection of the data points. You see, so it kind of winds its way around the linear fit. So the slope is 0.1701. So let's see if that's the same similar slope to that one. 0.1701. The slopes agree, and then let's say the correlation value, the R squared value is called correlation 0 0.9994, 0 0.9997, so even better. So that would mean 0.03% error instead of 0.06% error, 0.03% error. So we get even a better result, so this is really, really good uh, fit, and it proves that pressure is inversely proportional to volume, okay? Thank you very much.